what is up YouTube, it's your boy, I'm everyone's boy, the Tiki Moss today, I will be reviewing the 2017 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, in which this pay-per-view absolutely lived up to the hype, so let's get right into it. First off, the New Day versus the Ooh Souls. This match right here, to me, it was the best match of the night. The tag team championships held up in the Hell in a Cell. These teams laid it out on the line. The Usos won. Both teams using weapons of their choice. You had kindles, you had chairs, you had tables, you had you had things I've never seen before. Especially when when Biggie he speared one of the Usos out to the cage, and then the Usos using kindle sticks to beat up on New Day. And the New Day they had their own kind of. A rainbow type of kendo stick used in beat up. They killed that brother Jay Uso. And then, why well, well, I said I've never seen this before, I've never seen somebody tie up somebody to the cell. Like like Xavier Woods, he had kendo sticks and he used it to to put on Jim on Jimmy Uso. He he couldn't move. I've never seen it. And they, and they beat the dog piss out of that brother. They was die die. Die, die. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this brother right here, when he wakes up today, he he had, I bet he has bruises all over his body. He's hurt. He has welches everywhere. Usos, and then the Usos, I, another thing I've never seen before, one of the Uso brothers, I believe it was uh, Jay Uso, he, he actually cuffed. Xavier Woods on on the back of the post and he was whooping that boy with kendo sticks There was so much kindle kendo stick use in this match right here kendo sticks from each and every one of these guys Like I said before and in the ending it was a, a frog splash on Xavier Woods from the Usos and Big E was already destroyed Usos destroyed that brother sent him outside the ring but they laid chairs on, on, on Xavier Woods and they did like a frog splash. One, two, three. This match right here, arguably top five match of the year. Like I can't I'm, I can't think of all the all the great matches in WWE, but I'm telling you, this match when it comes to the when the WWE have the Slammy Awards, this match better be in the top four, top five candidate of the year for match of the year. Because I tell you, man. This match right here, the crowd was on their feet. The crowd was hot. Golly, man. Hell in a Cell, that's how you do it. I don't know how you can top that, but let's go to the next match. Next match, we had Rusev versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton coming to this match. Un Rusev is so, it's re really the underdog. Everybody knows that. Randy Orton... But in the beginning, Rusev started out beating on Randy Orton. It was like Rusev, he, Rusev was like, yo, I'm, I'm fighting Randy Orton. He's the legend killer. He's the viper. I need to attack him right now. So that's what he did. He came out um, huffing and puffing, just looking strong, looking big, whooping around the boy Randy Orton, threw Randy Orton outside the ring. Randy Orton, he, he, he felt kind of stunned for a second. He was like stunned. Um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like a street fight, but Rusev, he was, he, he know, he, he came in this match like, yo, I need to attack Randy Orton, get him weak. He was really going for that gut, that abnormal regional area of the body. He was really going for that, and he, he succeeded for a bit, but after a while, Randy started fighting back slowly. After that, Rusev, and then this this right here was excellent. Rusev went for the, um, what was the name of his move? The accolade. He went for the accolade. He had him for a second, and then Randy Orton somehow slithered out of that from the bottom. He threw Rusev um, forward in RKO. One, two, three. That was freaking cool, man. And whew, I mean, Rusev, he, he was doing good, but Randy Orton being that snake, being that viper, being that, that being that um, top 10 talent of all time in WWE history, he knows how to win matches. He knows when to, when to turn it up a bit. And as you can see, he absolutely did this. Next match, we got Baron Corbin versus Ty, Dig Ty Dillinger versus AJ Styles. This match started out with AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger teaming up to beat on Baron Corbin because with a, with a thing like with a, a match like this, you got a six eight guy. He's stronger. He's bigger. You 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 probably want to take that guy out of the equation so he can focus on um, the one on one competition. So that's what they that's what Ty and AJ Styles did in the beginning. But after that, Baron Corbin Baron Corbin started beating on um, AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger. After a while, yeah, it was basically. Um, Baron Corbin came in the ring, he threw Ty Dillinger out the ropes, he started fighting AJ, and then Ty Dillinger, he went outside, he started whooping on that brother. I, 
I knew for a fact he wasn't win. Um, Ty Dillinger wasn't running, but I mean, it's one of those things like Baron Corbin came out here and he did some good things, and after a while, AJ Styles he started coming back. AJ Styles he had he had that fire in his eye. He was like, "Yo, I'm the United States Championship. You're not gonna take this away from me, Baron Corbin, Ty Dillinger." So AJ Styles with with those nasty those elbows, godly. I believe AJ Styles throws the best elbow punches in the WWE. He's so aggressive. He's so so he's so he's so country. He's one of those dudes like seeing one of these country guys is like, yo, he that's a that's a tough brother right there. He's like AJ Styles is the type of guy like he, he's a nice guy. He seems like a nice guy, but he has that country. He got that country feel about him. He got that that warrior mentality. Like, I'm not going down. I, I'm gonna get physical. I'm gonna get a little dirty with you, man. And that's what he did, but in the end, Bear Corbin it wasn't enough. After that, all all three guys, all three guys really was getting their moves in and stuff like that. They was really doing their best stuff, but being that in that triple triple threat environment, you're going you're you're having to basically take out two guys because you take out one guy, the other guy on the, on the outside of the ring, he's gonna come inside and break it. So it's really tough. But being Baron Corbin, being the smart guy that he is, AJ Styles did a four. I think no 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 it was a it was a he did a phenomenal form form outside the ring but I think inside he did like a 450 splash on Ty Dillinger Corbin got back in the ring threw AJ, threw AJ Styles outside the ring covered Ty Dillinger one two three we got a new United States champion and Baron Corbin this match right here was a really good match like I said before all three guys looked really good like these these guys were they were throwing they were throwing their best stuff at each other and. It, it's one of those things like it's just it's not it's not it's not, not going to always be who's the best wrestler in triple threats fade or four ways because it's really comes down to who the smartest guy is like like in a triple threat match I know it's going off topic for a bit but I will want a wrestler like Edge he's the ultimate opportunity opportunist he's going to wait and he's going to just he's going to he's going to examine his opponents he's going to he's going to look for that one opening so he can make his move but that's what Baron Corbin did in this match and uh, I enjoyed it. Next match, we got uh Charlotte versus Natalia. This match right here, I mean, um, Natalia got the W. Uh, no, 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 Charlotte got the W. But it was one of those matches. I'm not surprised. Natalia, she is so, she is so damn good at what she do. She's the best there was, the best there ever will be. Um, the Black Hearts of the Heart family, man. But Natalia working on Charlotte left knee. Now I bet you, Natalia game plan was going to this match. She she's not she's not she's not more athletic than um Charlotte. She's not quicker. She's not flexible. She knows Charlotte Charlotte positives in her game is her flexibility. Flexibility and um her 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 athleticism. And that's what Natalia took out. She went for that left knee and basically after she doing after doing that, Charlotte she she couldn't she Charlotte was fighting but she didn't look the same. That left knee was hers. She couldn't do the things she usually do. She couldn't do the figure at four. She couldn't do the four, the figure eight, her special. She couldn't she couldn't really move uh, side to side, um rope to rope. She couldn't do that. She she didn't have she didn't her knee was that bad and I give all the credit in the world to Natalia. But after a while, when, when Natalia got outside the ring, Charlotte did a beautiful, I mean beautiful moonsault. That, that moonsault was that moonsault was excellent, bro. She did a great moonsault, took out Natalia, and then Natalia, after a couple of minutes, she just got a chair and she boom Charlotte's knee. I didn't feel that was necessary. I felt Natalia was gonna win that match regardless, bro. Because Charlotte, she could she she couldn't she couldn't do anything on her left knee. But Natalia, but Natalia, Natalia mindset was, yo, I'm not taking that risk. I'm the woman's champion. I'm the champ for a reason. I'm not losing this belt to, to, to Charlotte because I know Charlotte is that damn good. I know this. So she was like, yo, I'm going to take out her knee now to, to, to avoid any chances of that. So you can't, in the end, you can't get mad at the champion for doing that. I, I understand that. She's the champion. She don't want to lose. I get it. But I thought Natalia was going to win regardless. But... That was a great match, Charlotte. Um, I think Charlotte's gonna learn from this. She's gonna know. Okay, n next time, Natalia's go cause she's coming for my body. She's coming for my legs. She's coming for my knees. I need to guard my my knees and my legs to make sure Natalia don't do this because Natalia, she's the ultimate submissionist. She's the ultimate tech tech uh, tech technician technic uh, She does. She knows what she's doing. So, 
I think Charlotte learns her, learns her lesson and a uh, great match. Next match, uh, let's, uh, next match was Jinder Mahal versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Come into this match, I was scared for I was scared for um Jinder a bit um especially when the Singh brothers um got out. But Jinder Mahal uh, having that strength, having that power, you know he's he has the advantage. He's the champion. Shinsuke, say what you want. Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura, he's been NXT champion, but he's never he's never been a champion in WWE in in, in the big boys and on Raw and SmackDown. I mean, he's never been one of those type of champions. So in, in, until I see Shinsuke Nakamura win a championship, I I, I, can, I just can't have him be. I don't have him being gender. It's one of those things like I I just gotta see him. I gotta see him. I gotta see him beat enough big time people. He he did beat John Cena, and I give him that. I give him that. John Cena, he's a top five wrestler of all time. Arguably top four. That brother there is big time, man. But Shinsuke Nakamura, Jinder Mahal just came in here and he he came in here ready, man. But Jinder started beating um, Nakamura inside and outside the ring. Jinder Mahal, he got off in a hot start. I was surprised. I thought Sh I thought Shinsuke was gonna come out a little bit angry. You 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 because Jinder Mahal, you're out there making um racist uh, racist comments uh racist not comments but you know racist uh you know gestures. You know if I'm, I I thought Shinsuke was gonna come out like okay I'm I'm gonna knock you upside your mouth and knock the teeth out Playboy. I thought he I thought he was gonna do that but that's not his game. So I get it. I get it. I get it. Got six to your game plan but. Knock. He was fighting. He was really fighting one on three until he took the Singh brothers out, and then a great, the great Charles Robinson. He took those brothers out. So it was just one on one. But in the end, it wasn't enough. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of Jinder Mahal. He got the job done. People can say what he won, but he won the match, and uh, I give him that credit. He won because Shinsuke Nakamura. He went for that um his special with his knee. He missed. Jinder Mahal got him, and he did the Nelson slam or whatever. One, two, three. Um, this match right here, it, it was good. Um, Jinder Mahal, he's he's a physical, he's a specimen, he's 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 big time. The brothers big time. I'm glad he won. Hopefully on uh, SmackDown they can have a parade, have a parade for my boy. Um, but let's go to the next match. Dolph Ziggler versus Bobby Roode. I was I was really looking forward to this match right here. Like these guys are these wrestling wise, these guys are, are top ten, top five, top ten, top five. No, I would say top five talent in, in WWE. Meaning, these guys can they know how to put on a good match. They know the the, the ins and odds and the the who's and the who's and what's about you know putting on wrestling matches. So coming into this match, I expected big time, and I, I it was good, man. The match started out, it was a bit even. Nobody was really one up into the other. It was um, you know Bob Rude working that brother. Um, Dolph Ziggler getting his, getting, getting, you know, getting hot, getting, trying to, trying to get some moves in, but no, after a while, Dolph Ziggler, he went to that amateur wrestling background. He, people, people seem to forget this brother here, he, he, had, I believe he has the all-time wins at Kent State, and he's in the Kent State Wrestle, um, amateur wrestling hall of famer. Hall of Fame, so meaning this guy knows what he knows what to do on the ground. He knows when to he knows when to get the rights and missions in on the ground. That's one thing about those of you. You do not want to wrestle this brother on the ground. You want to get up. You want to stay high. You don't want to stay low. You don't want to. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to. You don't want to play to his element. And that's what Bobby Roode. That's what Bobby Roode figured out. Being a being a veteran that he is, he was like, yo. That's that's my weakness. That's his strength. So I need to stay up. And that's what he did. I'm proud of him. And. Uh, it was a slow. It was really a slow, slow pace back and forth match. It was a good match, and then after, and then um, Dolph Ziggler went for a roll up, and then um, Bobby Roode counter, and he pulled, he pulled the tights on Dolph Ziggler. He got the, he won. But first, Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler did pull the tights first. But Bobby Roode said, Bobby, Bobby Roode was basically like, "Yo, you want to pull the tights on me? So I'm gonna pull the tights on you, big man." And Bobby Roode won, so I'm proud. That was a big win for Bobby Roode. Dolph Ziggler is a former two-time World Heavyweight Champion. He's a four-time Intercontinental Champion, uh, uh, three-time United States Champion. So I mean, Dolph Ziggler, he's one. He's one of the best wrestlers in the game today, and that's a huge win for Bobby Roode. So we'll see what happens next. Next, Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. Oh my God! Let's let me start out by saying, Shane McMahon, why did you jump, bro? 
You didn't have to jump, man. You jumped at WrestleMania against The Undertaker, bro. Shane McMahon, he, this brother here, man, people can say what he want, but every time he wrestles, man, he, he lays it out on the line each and every time, bro. It's one of those things like, geez, man, Shane McMahon, it's like he don't even got to do this. This man is a, this man is a multi, multi-millionaire. He has three kids. He has a wife. He, I'm like, like, bro, he don't got to do it. So I, before anything, people must appreciate this man, Shane McMahon, because he ain't got to do it. I, mean, I got kids. What am I doing this for, man? I got the money, but that's the heart. That's the heart of Shane McMahon, bro. But it, in the beginning, it was a straight up brawl. Um, it, it, it felt like a street fight, you know. Was, these brothers, these, these guys, they, they, they ain't going to wrestle each other to the crown. They want to kill each other. And I don't blame Shane McMahon, Shane McMahon for, for wanting a street fight. Man, you bumped, you headbutted my dad. You busted his ass open. I'm worried sick about that, man. And you going to do that to my dad? I'm going to take your big, big Canadian ass out. And I don't blame Shane McMahon for wanting to, wanting to get a street fight in. Using, um, trying to hurt that guy, man. But KO, he was, and then after a while, KO, he, he was beating on Shane McMahon. It was really hurting him, man. But after a while, Shane McMahon, people forget he has a martial arts background. He, he does that. Seen a couple of videos on Instagram, YouTube. Shane McMahon shimmying and doing all that, you know, all that dancing, boxing, boxing footwork. It looked good. It was working. It was working, man. Shane McMahon, he was, ah, right jab, left, right, left, ah, hook. He was doing that to a T against that man, Kevin Owens. Got to give him credit. <clears throat> And Kevin Owens, that that was woozing, woozing himself down. Kevin Owens was getting a little bit weaker. He was he was it, was it was getting a little bit harder to stand up to to fight, you know. So I gotta give Shane McMahon credit in that regard. And then um, man, this was cool when when um Kevin Owens tried to do a cannonball through the table. He set up a table on the cage. He had um Shane McMahon be there. Kevin Owens ran on the apron. And he did a cannonball. He missed. That was freaking awesome, bro. I don't, that was cool. That was cool. That was a cool spot in the match. Uh, and then after that, um, Shane McMahon, he did a coast to coast to Kevin Owens. I love when, I love when Shane McMahon do coast to coast. He's been doing coast to coast for 20, 15 years, bro. Coast to coast. When he, I think he had it. Was it a, yeah, he had a trash can. Yeah, I think the chair, RVD does the chair. I think RVD was one of the first people to do that. But Shane McMahon, hey, he had a trash can and he did coast to coast. That's cool. And that shows how, how athletic he is because, hey, man, that's it's not easy. You got to be able to fly. You got to be able to have that lower body strength. And um, he, he does have that, man. But after a while, Shane McMahon, there was, it's after a while, Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens, they was fighting on top of the hell in the cell. That was so cool. They was on top of that mug. And I, for a second, I thought I thought the bottom was gonna break because they was doing suplexes, they was doing all types of moves, neck breakers on that on top of that cage or uh, on top of that cell. I mean, that was so cool. I thought for a couple of times the wall was gonna break. Whoa, whoa! But man, it didn't break, so that's good. And then Kevin Owens, he was trying to come, he was trying to come down the cell. Shane McMahon, I think, uh, did, yeah, yeah, I think Shane McMahon hit him. And I think Kevin Owens, yeah, yeah, Kevin Owens went through the table. He, um, he was climbing down. Shaker Man, he punched him, and he fell through the table. And after that, I was like, it's over. I was like, it's over. Shane McMahon about to pin him. And then, and then after that, Corey Graves was like, what are you doing, Shane McMahon? Cover him. It's over. Shane McMahon was like, no. He was basically, basically, he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. You, you headbutted my dad. You almost hurt him. He's past 70 years old you you tried to try to hurt my dad so if you brother i'm gonna put you through this table so shane man he picks up kevin owens putting him on the table he goes up to the top of the cell like he did at wrestlemania and what did he do next he missed he jumped from that thing and he missed but it wasn't his fault Sami Zayn, out of all people, Sami Zayn hates Kevin Owens. Those brothers had a rivalry, I think, maybe about a year ago. For for a couple of months, they don't they don't they don't like each other. So I, I'm still in shock. Why did Sami Zayn do this? Sami Zayn, why did you save Kevin Owens? He saved Kevin Owens, and then after that, Sami Zayn basically put Kevin Owens on Shane McMahon. 
One, two, three. This match right here was ridiculous. I loved it, bro. It was great. Come, come, SmackDown. I gotta, I gotta know why did you do it, Sammy? Why, bro? So I can't. Hey, I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud of WWE. Like, I want to tune in for SmackDown. Like, I honestly do. I want to know why did Sami Zayn do what he did, but that was cool, man. In the end, I give this pay per view. Jeez, bro. Maybe a 92 out of 100, bro. Like, jeez, bro. Oh, my God. I, I loved... I loved every every single match on this card. I loved... I was I was, I was was not bored not one time. You know, I, I was into it the entire time, man. I'm giving this pay-per-view a 92, 93 out of 100. Uh, jeez, Luis. Hell in a cell. Great pay-per-view. But if you enjoyed this video or you enjoyed uh, the pay-per-view... Like, subscribe, comment below. What was your favorite match? My favorite match was the Usos. That match right here, that had a brother jumping up and down, man. But um, just whatever your favorite match was, let me know. But until then, I'm your boy. I'm your boy. Peace.